All right, bitches. This is the Transformation Nurse Academy podcast. My name is Kevin. Thank you for joining me. This is an extra special episode. Um, I want to talk about a story here that just happened around July the 13th of this year. Crazy ass motherfucking shit, people. I don't even know what the fuck to tell you about this one and shit. So in Vallejo, in California, they have a probe going on. I'm going to share my screen. So fatal delay, federal po- Federal probe reveals Vallejo man died at Kaiser ER after eight hour wait for chest pain treatment. So if you've been listening to my podcast recently, we've been doing a podcast about the adult ESI triage. Um, After this little uh, special episode of this week, Jane will have the uh, pediatric ESI triage class coming out. And so you got to think about when you triage people, how important it is so you don't miss anything. So I'm going to scroll down here. A Vallejo man lost his life after spending more than eight agonizing hours waiting for treatment as a Kaiser Vallejo's emergency room. Francisco Del Delgadillo, 53, arrived at the hospital last December experiencing severe chest pain. Our investigative unit found that in the days and months prior to the incident, the facility's emergency room nurses had complained about chronically understaffed and revealed in interviews with several ER nurses and a circulated petition. A state and federal investigation motivated by Delgadillo's Delgadillo's—I can't even say Delgadillo's death found several deficiencies at Kaiser Vallejo's emergency department. It also revealed there was not enough nurses working that night uh, at Delgadillo's pain was not reassessed. So this is my biggest thing. So when you're a triage nurse or you're working in what's called a rapid medical evaluation zone or like a blue zone where you're kind of like treating and treating or you're bringing patients back into the zone and you're you're starting IVs, you're assessing them, you're drawing blood, you're giving medication and you send them back out to the waiting room. Don't fucking do that shit. This is exactly what's going to happen. And the nurses are going to be the one that's in trouble, not the hospital. I mean, I'm sure the hospital will get fined. But they don't care. They just pay the fine. And then the nurse is going to be one that's going to get in trouble with their license. So despite his urgent condition, the father of four languished in the waiting room and his pleas for medical attention went seemingly unheard. According to the family and the investigators, finding that on December the 8th, 2023, Delgadillo arrived at 3.44 p.m. and was given an initial test and assessment, including an EKG and check of his vital signs and blood work. According to the medical report, the test resulted normal. And here's where you got to understand this. Not every patient is the same. Just because you do an EKG, just because you do blood work, just because you do um, um, other kind of tests, not everybody has the same signs and symptoms. So you got to understand that no matter what, you have to keep reevaluating. You can't just leave your patient out in the fucking lobby without reevaluating. And I'm not trying to blame nobody, but, you know, nurses get thrown underneath the bus. So it's our job to make sure we pay attention to this shit. So at the time of his at the at that time, his family says he was assigned ticket number twenty nine. Holy shit. They give motherfucking ticket numbers in the damn ED. Uh, Sir, I'm serving twenty nine. Anyway, he was also triaged and identified as an ESI level two. What the fuck? If you're an ESI level two then you should not be in the motherfucking waiting room. Let me say that again. If you're an ESI level two, you should not be in the motherfucking waiting room. ESI one, ESI two should be taken back and should be taken care of pretty damn quickly because ESI level two is a higher risk for deteriorating, which this motherfucker did. All right, so he was triaging ESI level two. Uh, in the five level triage scale where the ESI level one is a high severity. ESI level two is a patient with, with illness or injuries that place them at high risk for deterioration or signs of a time critical problem that requires prompt attention, according to the hospital triage system. Del Gadillo's wife, Maria de la Luz Luna, says her family met Del Gadillo in the waiting room and continuously asked hospital staff to reassess him. Del Gladillo's medical record shows his chest pain escalated from a 7 to a 10 as he sat in the emergency, room, emergency waiting room. He was in the waiting room, motherfuckers, with the ESI level of 2. That's not appropriate. His son, Ulysses Del Gladillo Luna, recalled the distressing scene describing a waiting room filled with patients, none as visibly distressed as his father. 
I don't know. I wasn't there, but I believe it because the man died. He was holding tight on his shirt where his heart was. He was like struggling to sit on the chair. He kept moving around. He was laying down on the floor, Ulysses said. The investigation reports indicate that at some point the family called 911 for the emergency room. Well, let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not a nurse, if you call 911 for the emergency room, they don't really do much, at least not here in this area. They're going to come and reassess you, but they don't really do much. But it says here, when the paramedics arrived, they said they there was nothing they could do since they were already in the hospital. One of the paramedics spoke to the medical staff, and Del Gadillo was brought back to the EKG room, but was returned to the waiting room soon after, according to the review. So tragically, around 11.30 p.m., after eight hours of waiting, Del Gadillo collapsed in the hospital lobby and succumbed to cardiac arrest around midnight. Doesn't mean he had a heart attack. He could have had a aortic dissection or something else. So I don't know. I don't know what the records show, but we'll see. In the wake of the incident, the investigations by both federal and state authorities were launched into Kaiser Vallejo's emergency department operations. The Center for Medicaid and Medi Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, the Department of Health and Human Services, and the California Departments of Public Health conducted a thorough interview and identified eight deficiencies at Kaiser Vallejo's ER, including failures in emergency services and nursing services. So, if you look on here, I'll put this link into the uh, into this uh, episode. This is the link to the investigation that they found. Uh, and so I encourage you to read it. I mean, it's going to be crazy. We'll go back over this again. Maybe we'll do an extra episode of this because I didn't have time. I didn't know that the damn uh, thing was here, but it, it has all these um, uh, the investigation. It's called the Department of Health and Human Services for, for Medicaid and Medicare Services. It's a statement of deficiencies and plan of correction. So this is basically the report from the government on what the fuck they did wrong. Anyway, the investigation revealed the following findings about that night. The ER was described as crazy busy with 30 to 40 patients, but no certified nurse in the lobby to reassess them. What the fuck? If you have a patient in the lobby, you should have a triage nurse that can reassess patients. I don't understand that shit. Uh, the hospital's governing body failed to maintain adequate staff and did not follow its own policies and procedures. The facility had no strategic plan for a patient surge, according to the review. The ER failed to reassess the patient every two hours after triaging, resulting in the patient's cardiac arrest after eight hours of his arrival. Emergency room nurses at the hospital told us they had reportedly raised concerns about insufficient staffing during November in-person meeting and circulated petition that was eventually signed by all staff demanding safe staffing at the facility just three days before his death. And so you can see they have a picture on here where they had a little memo where patients were, you know, uh, where it said, you know, where they were trying to say they were um, short staff. Raquel Benito, representing the California Nurses Association for Kaiser Vallejo's Nurses, highlighted ongoing staffing challenges, stating that the department often operated with significantly fewer nurses than necessary a particular challenge during the predictable winter surges. In response to inquiries, Kaiser Permanente expressed condolences to Del Gadillo's family and detailed improvements made since the incident, including adjustment to staffing models and escalation procedures. So the problem is, you know, they didn't do anything other than apologize and shit. I don't know if there's a lawsuit, but I'm sure there's going to be. Uh, Attorney Jeff Mitchell, representing the Del Gadillo family, has initiated arbitration against Kaiser alleging medical negligence in Del Gladio's death. He says the staff is not to blame, but I disagree with that, uh, Attorney Jeff Mitchell. They are to blame because they need to make sure that they provide some kind of care outside in the waiting room. You can't just blame everything on the hospital. Nurses sometimes have to go above and beyond to make sure that the patient is safe because according to the Board of Nursing and your scope of practice and the law, we do have an obligation to keep patients safe. They should have raised hell that night. Um, there are only two hospitals in that part of Solano County, and that's one of them. And a lot of that population there is uninsured or underinsured. But Del Gadillo was insured under a Kaiser policy, and his medical records indicate that he had no previous heart problems. 
Kaiser Permanente will not say if the administrators were di disciplined. I really fucking doubt they were. Um, but affirm that it is now in compliance with federal and state requirements. It also said it consistently meets staffing ratios. So this is a crazy story, but I encourage you to download the um, I encourage you to download the uh, report from the government and fucking read this shit. So you don't want your patient waiting eight hours in the fucking ER hospital uh, waiting room with chest pain. So follow this story, download it, and we'll tie it together with our ESI triage that we've been doing, pediatric triage and the adult triage. And then as we go through the head to toe assessments, we'll talk about all these things too. All right, you guys, look out our, for our episode this week. It's going to be the pediatric ESI triage tool. And I hope you enjoy this episode, and I'll see you soon. All right, you guys, thank you very much. Fuck you, bitches. I love you. Take it easy. Peace. <laughs>